the first two items on our agenda are going to be continuations. I got an email from Tony Was Wasecki saying that they're not ready. And so with his permission, we'll continue the public hearing for the Hanum notice of intent until our April meeting, which will be April 21st. So uh, April 21st at seven o'clock, all in favor? Um, Aye. I guess I'm supposed to do a roll call. So Monty? Aye. Ann? Aye. George? Aye. Andy? Aye. And I vote aye. aye. And then the request for a certificate of compliance for long plane solar is likewise being continued until the next meeting uh, because they have not yet uh, gotten out to do the work to improve the drainage on that. Um, at this point, I don't think we need a vote. It's basically we can hold off as long as we want uh, in order to get it in compliance so that we can issue the certificate. So I guess I'll just say that we'll, we'll meet again in April and see whether they're ready for us to make a final decision on that. Um, we have another public hearing at 720, so we've got to figure out how to use up 15 minutes of time between now and then that we thought we were going to use on the previous two items. One thing we can do is, is jump up the Waitley Solar LLC request for a certificate of compliance. Um, so Brian, we went out and looked at the site. That, that's you, right? You're Waitley LLC? So Waitley that's correct. Solar. I don't think any of us saw anything that we were concerned about. Um, any, anybody want to comment from the board? Just all the um, invasives, remember we saw on the, wall, the fence line, that was about it, but nothing major. Yeah, right. I was going to mention that too, that it's not anything within our jurisdiction, but especially on the north side of the fencing around mm -hmm. that, there's all kinds of invasives growing up and through your fence. Okay, that's certainly good to know. I appreciate that including some really impressive perforations of your fabric and, and continued growth through the other side. I'm not sure how the plant managed to do that, but it was really <laughs> interesting to see. And you said it's primarily on the north on the north fence? That's where I noticed most of it. But it, it may be more around the other sides, but uh, I don't know, did other people have observe it on other sides? It was just the north, like you said. Yeah, okay. I mean, it'd be great to do the whole fence line, but the, the north side is where it seems the worst. And I'm sure it's because you provided some convenient places for the birds to perch and to uh, start seeding the areas right directly below along the fence line. Yeah. Great, but otherwise everything uh, everything looked good? Yeah, everything looked good. Great. So um, we can uh, take a vote to issue the certificate of compliance. Any further discussion before we vote? Nope. All right. All in favor? Andrew? Aye. George? Aye. Ann? Aye. Monty? Aye. I vote aye as well. So it's that easy, Brian. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's time. Aren't you glad you didn't have to drive to Waitley just to hear that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I love going to Waitley. I actually live in Atlanta, so uh, it would be it would be uh, would have been even, <laughs> even a longer drive for me. So, thank you for not making me uh, make the trek. Yeah, sure. So um, we will uh, get that in the mail uh, probably tomorrow. Okay. Uh, the, I I'm assume that it's okay to mail it to the address that the request was made from. Yeah, the ma mailing is fine. I'm, I'm sure it, the request is probably the R88 Black Falcon address in Boston. That's usually yep. the only address we use. Um, and there's no 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 major rush on it. So anytime you guys get it out is, uh, is perfectly fine. So. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you guys. You Hope you much. have a great evening. Thanks, you too. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I guess we can also, uh, let's see, wait a minute. All right. So we can also uh, address the minutes. And uh, any, did anybody get a chance to review the minutes or find anything that needs correcting? They looked fine to me. Yep, looked good. All right. So on our vote to accept the minutes, all in favor, Ann? Aye. 
George? Aye. Monty? Aye. Andy? Aye. I vote aye. Another unanimous decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so Christopher, I see that you've joined us, or Chris, however you go. Um, <laughs> we're a little ahead of schedule because of the first two items were just continuances, but we need to wait till 7.20 before we can consider your notice of intent. So just hang tight. Um, he's muted, so I don't know if he heard me or if he's just not responding, but um, the other thing that I, I thought we could do is, Anne, maybe you could fill us in a little bit on the floodplain meeting that you have with the planning board. What's the, there's some chatter from somewhere. Does that, do other people hear that? Scott, something is reverbing. Yeah, it's like an echo or something. Oh. <clears throat> so I, I didn't attend the whole meeting. I didn't make it till about 530. And of course, it didn't last much longer than that. Hmm. Um, they have scheduled another meeting for May 11th at 5 o'clock with uh, um, with the planning board to talk about this bylaw for the floodplain. Um, there seems to be a lot of work that has to be done. Um, I guess the state has extended the um, deadline. I, I don't remember when the deadline originally was. Um, Judy sent, uh, Judy Marklin sent out a summary uh, regarding the meeting. Um, there's a lot of issues that have to be worked out. Uh, the state's model is technically a template but it's really, she says it's really very prescriptive and there's a limited amount of wiggle room for a town to adapt it to its own needs. I guess the FEMA maps for Franklin County date to the eighties and there's some complaints about the detail, the topographical detail. Um, I guess FEMA is working to improve the maps but that might take five to six years um, the bylaw requires that the town have a floodplain administrator. Um, and there's um, some belief that that job should go to a paid staff person, not a volunteer. Um, they discuss, I, I missed some of this discussion, but basically they were, uh, this could job could possibly go to the new town planning assistant if that job is created or maybe shared with another town. Um, it says developing the permitting process is the most di difficult task. There is no model in Franklin County. There, the folks were, uh, the planning board is meeting or working with is developing or trying to contact state experts that might help with some of this. Um, Uh, permitting under the bylaw includes many types of activities that don't need building permits, permits like fences, sheds, ag facilities, paving, grading, etc. And <clears throat> a major educational effort will be needed to make people aware that the permits are needed and enforcement won't be easy as many floodplain sites aren't visible from the road. <clears throat> um, Anyway, so there's a few uh, there's a few questions to be answered. Can the town hire a consultant to serve as as part of this process? Does the bylaw override the state's ag zoning exemptions? And then there was some discussion about the campground down on uh, North Street about whether that's grandfathered in. Um, so anyway. That's kind of where it's at. They were trying to have something for the town meeting um, that I believe is in June, um, at least to put it on the docket. I'm not, they won't have anything to uh, vote on. 
but that's kind of where it's at. So did you get a sense that the town does not have a floodplain bylaw now? I mean, I'd never heard Correct. of it. Correct. They don't have one. Don't have one. OK. <clears throat> So my understanding in terms of some of the background is that in order for people to qualify for national flood insurance, there need to be certain protections. Uh, and so the best way to do that in Massachusetts is for each community to adopt a bylaw. And the state has come up with a model that would meet the needs of the national flood insurance program. Mm -hmm. So basically they want all the towns to adapt something pretty close to the model to ensure that the residents who live within those areas are qualified to get the insurance. Right. Does this just affect all just major rivers or any like? Any floodplain designated by FEMA. So, oh, okay. so FEMA is, is the, I don't know if they originated the plan, but they're, they're the ones who provide the maps, I guess. Yeah, the uh, floodplain map, like I have these paper ones, and uh, yeah, they're dated 1979, and uh, they're from the, they're, you know, firm maps or flood insurance rate maps, and so wherever they have designated 100-year floodplain or velocity zones or floodways, they have all these different <coughs> names for different areas, but by and large, I think it's primarily what's ever in the 100 year floodplain uh, has to be, um, you know, basically that's what we're talking about is what they delineate because that's what it's intended for, for the, for the flood insurance. And the Wetlands Protection Act does protect most 100 year floodplains, but not I mean, basically all 100 year floodplains are land subject to protection, but there are exempt activities under the Wetlands Protection Act and the model bylaw would presumably cover those exempt activities like agricultural sheds and barns and other structures, um, as well as uh, maybe grandfathered structures, I don't know, um, or, um, you know, utilities, you know. So I think a lot of the protections would be redundant with the Wetlands Protection Act, but it doesn't cover everything. So there needs to be a bylaw that presumably would be under the jurisdiction of the planning board. So there'll be some overlap in the jurisdiction. And that's why it's probably good for us to stay involved in the process as best we can. Well, one of the sticking points may be the fact that the bylaw requires the town to have an administrator for this flood plane. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, you know, there's a whole hiring thing and then coming up with the funds for that, I guess. So. Yeah, the, they're, they're in the middle of a, or they're in the process of doing a study for the, Central Connecticut River part of the watershed. And uh, there's a consulting company that's working for uh, FEMA to do that study that uh, I assume is going to result in new maps at some point. And they contacted me at one point and said, so who's the floodplain manager for your town? <laughs> like I've never heard of a floodplain manager. I have no idea who's a floodplain manager. And you know, sure enough, I guess we don't have one. Um, but we have to create one under the bylaw in order to, you know, serve that permitting function. Apparently, uh, FERCOG is holding a Zoom briefing on the bylaw with somebody from the DCR on April 14th. If anybody's interested in that. But the Waitley meeting is on, the, on May 11th. May 11th. At five o'clock. So, Andy, you want to continue to be the commission's representative on this issue, or do you want to hand it off? Uh, I'll I'll give it a try. We'll see how. Uh... Okay. 
That sounds that, good. It should be available on the 11th. If I'm not, I'll let you know. Any other comments or questions? Any other uh, updates or other issues that going on in town? I had, excuse me, I had one thing to bring up. Um, Mike's on the board of health and, um, and he said, if you have time, could you bring this up in the meeting? Um, Tom Munier, who has that storage of um, manure. Yeah. Um, he, um, he is very concerned about the cost that it's, how much it's gonna cost him to um, close that in or, you know, contain it in, in a way that the town's gonna be happy with. And he asked if it would be enough if he put down blacktop instead of concrete with concrete barriers. And um, I just said I could bring it up to discuss. Where's the pile? It's, um, he lives on Chestnut Plain Road and he has that pile of manure that's near the, um, the wells. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, my suggestion is, is that he asked, you know, the NRCS what would be support? appropriate or inappropriate for a manure storage. What's NRCS, Scott? It's a, it's a USDA agency called the Natural Resources Conservation Service. It used to be the Soil Conservation Service, but they renamed themselves. And there's an office in Greenfield and they generally provide technical assistance to farmers. Um, I'm not sure whether the Muniers qualify as a farm. You know, they have, they used to have horses, but I don't know what they have now. They, they don't have any livestock, but it is, it, his livelihood is collecting manure from other people and storing it and then selling it. Or, um, and also fertilizing his, he does a lot of haying. Yeah. So okay. I know it is, um, it's a substantial amount of his living. He's also a truck driver, you probably know. Yeah, well, if he's a, if he's a legitimate farmer, then NRCS should be willing to come out and advise him on what kind of manure storage would make sense. But, you know, if, if he wants to do something that they don't feel comfortable with, I don't think we would feel comfortable with it either, or at least I okay. wouldn't. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other issues that you've run into in town? All quiet on the home front. All right. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to talk a bit about the uh, the other uh, project that came through, but uh, after this hearing. Okay. okay. All right, uh, it's 7.20, so it's time to uh, continue the hearing for the 148 Westbrook Road. Chris, are you with us? Uh, yes, yes, I am with you. Excellent, uh, I, right on schedule, that's fantastic. <laughs> Wasn't sure if we were gonna be sticking um, um how would, would you like me to just show the updates to the application with a screen share uh and sure we can, I, can answer I, questions. I think i need to um assign you as a co-host so let me do that okay you should be able to share your screen now okay Share screen. Okay. All right. So I have the uh, the the new version of our of our site plan that was resubmitted uh, to DEP and copies sent to the Environmental Commission. Um, and the the plan shows um, the new the new proposed ADU and covered deck out alongside the existing pool area. Uh, which was approved by the ZBA uh, late last year. And then the key thing that we changed and edited uh, since the hearing last month was we're showing a, a 700 square foot, which is just over a one-to-one -one replacement um, restoration zone in the bottom corner of the property. 
uh, accounting for the, the space that we need to restore along the bank of the river to make up for the, the space that we used um, to build the new ADU and this covered porch. Um, so I guess the specifically altered area is uh, 682 square feet. Um, and that is the footprint of the, the house and the deck. Um, and we're, we are proposing 700 square feet. And we did a little bit more just to account for um, any, just a little bit of extra space in case any of these lines are not exact. We wanted to make sure that we're actually restoring at least one-to-one -one in line with the, the DEP's rules. Um, and we'll be, fen we'll be roping this off so the homeowner does stop mowing. Uh, the homeowner does have a well manicured lawn, but we'll be we'll be roping this off so they know that they can't uh, that they can't be mowing that, and they're going to return that to um, to its natural state. Uh, so that's the update we made to the application. I, I guess with that, I would just open it up to questions um, to the to the board and to you, Scott. Okay. Any questions? No. Comments. I do, I do have a comment. Yeah. Um. It's it seems um, it, it's not a problem, but it seems odd that you made it a rectangle instead of, um, because then you have those angles to maintain around. Instead of making it, um, you know, changing the edge of the lawn. Like it's like a. In, in a curve yeah he they've got um they've got an existing garden that the homeowner shrubs on along mm -hmm. this side so i think it works in person than it does just shown as this odd rectangular shape um oh, and then the there's another like there's rectangle? another tree yeah the, the, she has a she has probably a four foot strip here down right. at the back of the property that she's using to do some shrubs that i don't know what what species yeah. they are but Okay, so we talked about that. It was it was hard to see just because it was winter. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's like, a, you know, that 35 foot area where there's no garden along the edge of the property where it abuts the stream. So then it was just a question of how deep did they have to go to get the square footage to compensate for the square footage altered. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right, so um, the proposal is to issue an order of conditions permitting the work. And uh, I guess the first question is, is anybody opposed to issuing an order of conditions permitting the work? Sure. Does anybody have any special conditions that you'd like to apply to this permit? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Well, when you say roped off, what does that mean? Um, we'll be we'll be pounding some stakes in and just putting a rope around it. That's just a barrier, so he's not in there with his mower. Okay. All right. So the proposal before us is to issue an order of conditions permitting the work without any special conditions. Uh, so the vote, uh, George. Aye. Uh, Monty? Aye. Andy? Aye. Ann? Aye. And I vote aye. So um, I will be sending that out probably tomorrow to the address. Um, there was, uh, I guess there was one question I just wanted to clarify with you because on the notice of intent, uh, when we talked about the registry of deeds or, or the, the parcel and book, you you would put Hampshire County, uh, but Waitley is in Franklin County. Was that an error or is this actually registered in Hampshire County somehow? No, it's for the address that, that may be an error okay. that we put in Hampshire rather than Franklin. I made out the order of conditions. I already filled it out, assuming that we would be issuing it and I'll send it out tomorrow, but I put Franklin, assuming okay. that that was a mistake that I just double checking with you on that. And um, so what I would do is mail it to the address 
of the applicant, which I guess is you. Yep. Um, unless you want it mailed somewhere else. No, nope, that would be ideal. Um, it's required. One of the conditions, the boilerplate conditions from DEP is that the order be registered at the Franklin uh, Registry of Deeds. And then that you send back the, the, uh, the form that, that proves that it has been done so. Then when the work is completed, there's another form to request a certificate of compliance. So you would send that to us, we would do a site inspection and then we would at a future meeting vote to issue that certificate of compliance that gets taken to the registry of deeds and then that releases the property from the order, the order of conditions. Okay. So that's the process, you know, you are required to, to register it and then you're gonna want to unregister it once it's where work is complete. So there's not an encumbrance on the deed. Okay. All right, that's what we'll do. Probably um, in the next month or so, we'll probably be scheduling that compliance inspection after we've registered and, uh, and, and roped off the area and got the final certificate, certificate of occupancy. Yep. Yep. That sounds good. Better to get it done and get it out of the way. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. All right, All right George, are you, which project are you? Sovereign builders. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, before I saw the agenda, I had spent quite a lot of time working through those plans. Uh, that's the um, piece of land down across from Tom's on State Road. Oh, yep. That's the site inspection that I missed during the sidewalk, mm -hmm. um, where apparently the builder was talking about a single family home. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't clear what they were talking about. They were sort of vague about it. So I wasn't sure what they were gonna come back with, but I was assuming it was just a home. Uh, did, have you looked at the plans? Yeah. It's an enormous self-storage facility. Yeah. A central building is over 60,000 square feet on three stories, climate controlled. The two smaller non-climate controlled buildings taking up every inch of the uh, of the space and uh, then a little bit uh, into the inside the 50 foot buffer. Yeah. Um, I, what I didn't see with the plan was any stormwater management plan or calculations. Right. So the reason I, I can't understand the calculations anyway, I don't have that expertise. So I'm wondering if we need to uh, have it in mind to have a consultant on that. Because it's a big building in, in a small area surrounded by wetlands. Yeah, no, that's probably a good thing. We could use our 53G rules to uh, to to hire a consultant and bill the applicant. Right. And uh, we have not yet received a filing, so we don't have any plans that were prepared specifically for the Conservation Commission. I would assume that when they do that, they will have stormwater plans that would go with it. Okay. There's a lot of. Uh, drainage plans and uh, retention areas and uh, a lot of detail included in there, but uh, no, no way of knowing whether it's gonna be adequate. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, gonna, that's going to uh, probably be a significant project for us to review. It may take some work on our part and maybe several meetings mm -hmm. or a couple of meetings at least. I can't imagine there's much of a demand for Storage. I don't know. Isn't there one up the road right next to the cement factory? Isn't that a storage facility? Yeah. But you know, Americans, we just love to accumulate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then hide it away in a storage unit. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Well, I mean, my basement is a storage unit for both of my kids right now. So mm. um, you can see, I can see how. Yeah, you accumulate a lot of stuff and then you have to move into a small apartment and it's like, well, where do I put all of my stuff? Yeah, our barn is a storage unit for Hattie as well. <laughs> I was just surprised by the size of this, uh, yeah. this building. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of units, a lot of space. Like RVs and storage units. That's what we want right along Route 5 and Route 91, right? Yeah. That's what everybody, that's what we get built a lot of. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, you know, there's also apparently still there, um, LaSalle's is still going through a, some process with the planning board or site plan review for a cannabis production facility there. So if that gets far enough along, that's gonna have to come to us as well. So that might be another big uh, filing that we'll have to deal with. Um, Ward Smith told me that he went out and reflagged the wetlands at Seven River Road so that they could start putting in the fencing for that facility. So apparently it's gotten approval and is actually gonna to go to construction soon. Okay. Yeah, the only other thing is, is that I did go up Dickinson Hill Road and up into the, the, the discontinued road up there and saw that culvert again that got put in illegally. And it, I'm really torn about whether this is something that we should be taking some action on or, or, or not, but there's an outlet drop at that culvert. I guess I was gonna see how far that stream goes above that, but uh, yeah, it's like somebody went in and put a big plastic corrugated pipe in and it's a pretty significant little construction job that they did without any permits. Yeah, the, the guy who has a house just beyond that, apparently he had a buddy to help him with that. From what I hear, he, he fell through the bridge that was there or the culvert or whatever it was. Mm. And uh, I didn't see it happen, but somebody who was running up there said, his buddy was uh, looked uh, like he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. Mm. Which seems to be the case. Mm. Yeah, so maybe we'll have to take a field site visit and take a look at it and make some decision as a group about whether we want to pursue it or not. What does the culvert go under? Road. A road or a driveway? A road. It's a discontinued road up past Melanie's. It goes uh, it goes all the way to Conway. It's like a you know dirt road. But there's someone's home, and I don't know if it's a full time home or what it is. But it's up there on the uh, west side of the road, just beyond the culvert. I didn't know there was anyone beyond Melanie. Yeah, there's a. I think it might be a camp. Now, I don't know if there's electricity that goes up to it or not. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, maybe when the weather's a little bit warmer and the mud dries up, um, we'll, we'll do a site visit and go take a look. Other than that, I, I don't have anything more. If there's nothing more, we can pull the chain and mm -hmm. adjourn for the night. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you next month, if not before. Yep. I'm sure there'll be site visits. So I'll see you. I'm sure we'll see you before. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye bye.